But here's the thing. I am not actually so big of a nerd that I am interested in TOBs for their own sake. I don't go saying to myself, oh, wow, let's check out this caching mechanism. It's so cool. It makes things so efficient. No. This was a means to an end to explain Shadow Walker to you. So Shadow Walker is what's actually cool because Shadow Walker is TLB manipulation for fun and profit. Basically the idea is that if you had some malware and it was trying to hide itself from a memory scanner, it could actually exploit the fact that there is a different data translation look side buffer from an instruction translation look side buffer and in so doing, it could essentially force to be cached a translation, which means that attempts to execute would yield the rootkit code, and attempts to read by some security scanner would read some benign garbage code or garbage data, it doesn't matter what, just doesn't let you see the rootkit. So basically, you can think of this as a stealth malware technique or an anti-memory forensic technique. So in order to do this, what it needs to do is it has to have some way to differentiate execution where it wants to feed its own assembly instructions so that its own code runs from reading of memory, which would be something that it would expect to occur instead via a security tool, such as a memory scanner or memory dumper. In order to do this, it actually specifically manipulates the page table entries for its own code in order to set the present bit equal to zero and it essentially wants a page fault to occur every single time its own code would be accessed or its own code would be read. Then they have to actually replace the page fault handler with their own code that is going to have special logic to basically say, is it me trying to execute myself or is it some other tool trying to read me, which I need to hide from? So how would it determine that? It would have the modified page fault handler examine the EIP that was saved onto the stack. I'm gonna be speaking here in 32-bit terms because that was the original code, 32-bit system. So it examines the EIP, which is, pointed onto the, which is pushed onto the stack. And if the EIP itself is inside of its own code memory range, it knows that it itself is trying to execute itself. And therefore it should go ahead and have the page fault handler update the page table entry for its particular code to point at the real physical address where its code resides. If instead someone is trying to access this, and if the assembly instruction is not within the range of its own code, that means it's some sort of security scanner coming along and trying to read its memory. If this occurs, then it's going to go ahead and map the page table entry to some other garbage piece of memory so that they don't actually get to see the attacker code. So here's the ASCII art of doom, basically saying that the page fault handler is going to always do this check when a page fault occurs. It's gonna say, is this page fault in the range of my memory that I wanna hide? Let's imagine that that memory is in frame number one. If it's in that range, then it's gonna fill in the page table entry that entry, this mapping from the virtual address to this particular physical address, will be cached inside the ITLB. Consequently, the you know, page fault handler won't be invoked the rest of the time on attempts to execute this code. So it'll actually be you know, reasonably performant in that it'll just run the code just fine. But the page fault handler, having seen that there was a attempt to read the data instead of execute the data, would have filled in the page table entry with a pointer to some random frame of garbage, and consequently the DTLB would cache this mapping of a particular virtual address to that particular physical address. And now the fact that there's two different TLBs is going to mean that there's execute accesses, just always translate through this one and automatically performantly execute the code, and data accesses always just translate through this one and automatically hide the code from security tools. So there are of course a number of different ways that Shadow Walker could be defeated, things like checking the IDT for the page fault handler to make sure that it hasn't been redirected out to some rootkit code, and in reality things, technologies like PatchGuard on, on Microsoft Windows at least, sort of automatically do this today. Of course, defeating patch card is its own specialty, so if you combined a patch card defeat with a IDT overwrite, then you know you could still open up this technique. Beyond the fact that you could change the IDT entry itself, instead an attacker could have hooked the actual code, the assembly for the existing page fault handler instead of changing the table entry. So again, you could integrity check that. 
uh, security tools could manually flush the data TLB before, or sorry, flush the TLB in general using, you know, the invalidate page assembly instruction before scanning memory. Security tools could make their own virtual to physical address translations to basically walk through all of the different physical addresses. There's paging profiling that could occur, or the security software could use DMA, direct memory access, or cold boot, where you physically yank out the RAM and read the data, because neither of those mechanisms are subject to TLB translation the same way that a security software running from within the kernel is. And just in general, you know, those techniques are more forensically sound. The only reason that I go through this, you know, laundry list of ways to defeat it is just to say that while things like patch guard do make it so that this is not a trivial thing on Microsoft Windows today, the reality is, you know, security software is not actually trying to mitigate against this type of attack. Other operating systems don't have mechanisms like patch guard protecting your IDT. You know, Linux, there's definitely nothing protecting the IDT, and so an attacker could do exactly this thing that was described back in 2005, and you know, security software would be none the wiser. So in general, I just like Shadow Walker, even if it's you know defeatable once you know about it. I like it because it's again this example of an attacker who really understands the system is going to hands down beat any defender who doesn't really understand the system, doesn't understand what they need to be mitigating against. Now for what it's worth, Shadow Walker, as made originally in 2005, has actually been broken for quite a while by things that like Intel made the shared TLBs around 2008 and that would have broken it. So in 2014, Jacob Torrey did a talk where he specifically talked about updating Shadow Walker capabilities to work on more modern hardware. So check that out if you're interested in this kind of attack.